All right, in this last video, I'm going to show you how to calculate p-values and confidence intervals in jump. Um, so this example is about wind power. Um, so should you generate electricity with your own wind turbine, or yeah, not turbine, turbine, um, to produce enough energy, your site should have an annual average wind speed of at least eight miles per hour, according to the Wind Energy Association. One candidate site was monitored for a year with wind speeds recorded every six hours, and it tells us we can treat the sample as representative and each of the measurements as independent. Um, so first we'll just kind of look at these data. So we're going to do analyze distribution for this. Um, so we've kind of seen this already um, back in unit three. So I opened my wind power data and I'm going to do analyze distribution. Okay, and I'm just interested in the wind speed. So I'm going to take wind speed and put it in the box for Y and click OK. And I like to see mine horizontal, so I'm going to stack it. Um, so that's the first output that's in our notes here. Um, and you're familiar with all of this output. Um, it gives us the five number summary here, mean, standard deviation, um, some other information there. Okay, so before we actually start the test, um, we want to check our conditions here. Um, so it tells us that we have um, data that we can consider as representative. So we have a representative sample. So we'll go ahead and check that one. Now my dog is drinking water. Can you hear her laughing? She's like as loud as possible. Okay, and then we can look at our sample size. So looking at this distribution, um, we can see that it's skewed right. So the data are skewed right. But um, that's not really a concern when your sample size is large enough. So usually our guideline is that our sample size needs to be um, at least 30. And our sample size here is much bigger. So where it says N, that's your sample size. So the data are skewed right, but the sample size is very large here. So we have 1,114, that's definitely bigger than 30, um, so it's okay to go ahead and do the test. Okay, so to get this next output, I'm going to go back to my Analyze Distribution, and I'm going to click the arrow next to the variable name and then choose Test Mean. Okay, so um, I'm going to put in whatever my null hypothesis value is here. Um, so for this one, I'm going to be testing the null hypothesis is 8, and the reason is because it says the annual average wind speed needs to be at least 8 miles per hour. Um, so I'll use that and click OK. I'm not going to uh, check anything else. Um, just put the hypothesis value in and that's it. Okay, so this is giving me that next little bit um, of output that's in the notes. Okay, so let's go ahead and write out our hypotheses. So this is all about a mean, so the average wind speed. So I want to write it in terms of mu. Um, notice I'm not going to use y bar. y bar would refer to the sample mean, so in this case 8.2, um, but you don't need to put that in your hypotheses. You want your hypotheses to be about the parameter. Uh, my null hypothesis value is going to be that the mean is equal to 8. Remember, the null always has an equal sign in it. Um, and then the alternative, that's what you're trying to show. So here we're trying to show that the true mean wind speed at this site is greater than 8 miles per hour. All right, and then we're just going to use the output that's given here. So where it says test statistic, that's your T statistic. So remember Z and T are both um, test statistics here. And then, so I'll go ahead and write that down, 1.9178. And then these three numbers, these are all p-values. So there's different options depending on what type of test you have. Um, the one with the absolute value sign in it, that's the two-sided p-value. And then you have two one-sided greater than and less. So these are both one-sided p-values. Um, you notice, by the way, that if you take 0 0.0277 and you double it, you get the two-sided p-value. So that makes sense since the um, distribution is symmetric. OK, so we had a greater than sign. Um, so we're going to take that value as our p-value. 
So we get 0 0.0277. And it tells us that we should use 0.1 as our alpha. So our p-value is less than that cutoff. So I would say that I have sufficient evidence to conclude the site is suitable for a wind turbine. So in other words, that the average really is greater than eight. Okay, so that's how I get my p-value. Um, and then the last thing that I'm going to do is calculate my confidence interval. Okay, so to do this, I'm going to go back into jump. And I'm going to click the um, down arrow again, so besides the variable name. And there's an option here for confidence interval. Um, the notes say to use a 90% confidence interval, so I'll pick the confidence level there. Okay, and this is where I get the output from. So you may have noticed that it actually already gave us the 95% confidence interval. Um, so that was given back at the top. So here where it says upper 95% and lower 95%, that's the 95% confidence interval. Um, that comes up by default. Um, but if you want another level, then you have to do um, this process. So we want the confidence interval for the mean. And in this class, that's always what we're going to be looking at. Um, so you can mark out that standard deviation row if you want to. And our confidence interval numbers are given here, where it says lower CI and upper CI. Um, those are our numbers. And then this 0.9, this is the confidence level. So this is just reminding us that we picked 90% confidence. Okay, so if we want to write down our interval, our 90% confidence interval goes from 8.03, I'll do four, decimal places to be consistent, 8.4072 on the top end, okay? So if we were to interpret that, we are 90% confident that the true average wind speed, right, we're trying to estimate a parameter, the true average wind speed at this site is between these values. It's between 8.03 and 8.4072. Okay, so we're estimating that that's where the parameter is. So one more thing that I wanna show you is how to break it down by groups. So right now we're looking at wind speed overall, um, but let's say that we wanted to look at it in groups. So I'm gonna go back to analyze distribution um, and I'm gonna look at wind speed again. But let's say that I want to, oh my God, my dog's squeaky toy. You've got to be kidding me. All right, so I'm going to put season in the buy box and click OK. Now it's going to give me a separate output for each season. Go ahead and stack them all. And notice that this is just giving me um, exactly the same analysis for each one. So if I wanted to do um, the test for each of these categories, I could do that. Um, if I wanted to do the confidence interval for each of the categories, then I could. 